Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today we are checking out the new Ryzen 5 7500F and I'll be comparing it head to head with its nearest 13th gen competitor from Intel, the Core i5-13400F, or at least I think that'll be its nearest competitor based on the expected pricing. Anyway, before we get into it, Today's sponsor spot is brought to you by ASUS Store and their new Locker Store 6 Gen 2 AS6706T. With its quad core CPU, it offers easy backups to numerous devices and cloud services, and included is dual 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, which can be combined in SMB multi channel for up to twice the bandwidth. And you can even upgrade to 10 gigabit networking via an adding card. As for the software, you're not locked down with support for third-party operating systems, while the latest version of ASUS Store Data Master packs all the features you could possibly need, including iSCSI. We've populated ours with Seagate's IronWolf 20 terabyte drives, and with the health management software, we can ensure the drives are running optimally. Then to maximize random IO performance for content creation, we're using Team Group's T-Create SSDs. So for more information, please check the link in the video description. Okay, so the 7500 doesn't really exist yet, at least outside of China. And although global availability is eventually meant to be a thing, at this point in time, it's difficult to locate one outside of China. And there are no official listings in the US or Australia, at least at the time of making this content. But word on the street is the 7500F will come in at an MSRP of $180 US, which is a reasonable discount when compared to the $230 US asking price of the 7600. And that's an important comparison to make because the 7500F is basically a 7600. And by basically, I mean the integrated graphics has been disabled. So essentially AMD is copying Intel's naming scheme here as they often like to do, though in this instance, it actually does make sense and is less confusing for consumers. Unlike the chipset names, for example, where Intel has B560, B660 and B760, while AMD took B550 and B650. So whereas the F skews from Intel note a lack of iGPU support, the same is now true for AMD's F SKU CPUs. But whereas you might have expected a Ryzen 5 7600 without an iGPU to be called the 7600F, AMD has gone with the 7500F, which is a bit odd. That is until you realize there is another subtle change here. The base and boost clocks have been reduced by 100 megahertz, a mere two to 3% reduction in operating frequency. But that means AMD can no longer, or really should no longer, stick with the 7600 branding. Still, for those of you uninterested in the iGPU, the 7500F is no doubt going to be very appealing, especially if you're on a bit of a tight budget and are looking to jump on the AM5 platform. If the $180 US MSRP is accurate, it'll be a little over 20% cheaper than the 7600 while delivering performance that's within a few percent. Meanwhile, the Intel 13th gen alternative at this price point is the Core i5-13400F, which can be currently had for roughly $210 US. And this has been the typical asking price for this part, though it did drop as low as $165 US at Best Buy earlier in the year for about a week. Now, most of you are probably familiar with the 13400F by this point, but for those of you that aren't, it packs 6P cores that can be clocked as high as 4.6 GHz, along with 4E cores that can clock up to 3.3 GHz. There's also 20 megabytes of L3 cache, though the L2 is based on the 12th gen architecture. And that means the P cores pack 1.25 megabytes per core and not two megabytes like the 13600K. While the E cores also only get two megabytes per cluster, not four megabytes. So if you're interested in building a new budget gaming PC based on the latest AMD or Intel hardware, which way should you go? Ryzen 5 or Core i5? Well, we're about to find out. For testing the 7500F, it was installed on the Gigabyte X670 Eorus Master using DDR5 6000 CL30 memory. Meanwhile, the 13400F was benchmarked on the MSI MPG Z790 Carbon Wi Fi with DDR5 7200 memory. And then for the graphics card, we have the ASUS ROG Strix RTX 4090 OC Edition, which has been benchmarked at 1080p, 1440p, and 4K. As usual, I won't go over all of the 26 game configurations tested. Instead, we'll look at the individual results for about a dozen or so, and then we'll jump into the big breakdown graphs. Though all graphs will be made available to Floatplane and Patreon members. Okay, let's get into it. First up, here's a look at Fortnite, and for CPU testing, I've moved to the medium quality preset for the DirectX 11 results, as this more closely resembles the quality settings players will likely use, 
or at least competitive players should use. The 13400F maxed out at 326 FPS, whereas the 7500F, that pushed as high as 453 FPS. And that's an almost 40% performance uplift. I should note though that these results are heavily CPU limited, so even at 4K, the Ryzen 5 processor was still 30% faster. Now, although enabling ray tracing can increase CPU load, we see that in Fortnite, the primary performance limiting component is the RTX 4090, so there's really not much to see here. Next up, we have Spider-Man Remastered, and in this example, we see that the 7500F can push up to 179 FPS, whereas the 13400F is limited to 155 FPS, which is obviously still very playable, but it does mean the Ryzen 5 processor is 15% more powerful in this example. It's also worth noting that despite using the very high quality preset, the RTX 4090 is still CPU limited, even at 4K. And for reference, the RTX 4060 can render around 150 FPS at 1080p using the very high quality preset. So although we are using an RTX 4090, it is worth noting that the 13400F is close to limiting the performance of even the 4060 in this title. And of course, we're not interested in GPU limited results as we're testing CPU performance here, and therefore it's important that we isolate CPU performance when giving buying advice, at least within reason. Now, enabling ray tracing can increase the CPU's workload, and here we see that the 7500F is now almost 20% faster at 1080p, and even at 4K remained 13% faster as the 13400F hit a wall at just over 110 FPS. And again, for reference, the RTX 4060 can render just over 120 FPS at 1080p using these quality settings. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is a 2018 release, so it is very old now, but it can still work modern CPUs very hard. That said though, both did push over 200 FPS in this example, so performance was certainly very good using either CPU, though the 7500F was 10% faster at 1080p and 1440p, and even managed a 7% uplift at 4K. The Last of Us Part 1 is a very CPU demanding game due to the constant texture streaming, but it's also extremely GPU demanding when using the ultra quality settings. And as a result, we're heavily GPU limited at 1440p and 4K, though at 1080p the 13400F maxed out at 141fps, and although the 7500F can't reach the limits of the RTX 4090, it was still 11% faster, allowing for 156fps on average. A Plague Tale Requiem is another modern and very CPU demanding title, and in this example the Ryzen 5 processor was almost 20% faster at 1080p and 1440p. In fact, it wasn't until we reached the 4K resolution that the data became GPU limited. Hogwarts Legacy is also extremely demanding on the CPU, but in this example we have two very evenly matched CPUs. The 7500F was just a few frames faster at each of the tested resolutions, so there's no real winner here. Enabling ray tracing does favour the 7500F slightly more with the increased CPU load, and we did see up to a 9% performance advantage for the Ryzen processor at 1440p. Both processors were also very evenly matched in Star Wars Jedi Survivor, despite the results being heavily CPU limited at 1080p. Here the 7500F was just 4% faster, allowing for 128 FPS on average, opposed to 123 FPS with the 13400F. As was the case with Spider-Man Remastered, the Watch Dogs Legion data is heavily CPU limited, even at 4K, which is quite incredible. I should note though that the RTX 4060 and RX 7600 can both push around 120 FPS at 1080p under these conditions, so the 13400F isn't getting much more out of the RTX 4090. The 7500F was 11% faster at 1080p, 13% faster at 1440p, and then 11% faster at 4K, though we were also looking at a 17% improvement to the 1% lows at 4K. So the Ryzen CPU is clearly faster in this title, though the 13400F was still able to deliver highly playable performance. There's really not much that can be said about the Resident Evil 4 results, apart from the fact that they're extremely CPU limited, and both CPUs were limited to the same level of performance. Next up we have Halo Infinite, and here the 7500F was 14% faster at 1080p, or 16% when looking at the 1% lows, and those margins are reduced to 7% for the average frame rate and 11% for the 1% lows at 1440p, before becoming entirely GPU limited at 4K. 
Moving on to the Callisto protocol, and here we find some pretty strong performance gains for the Ryzen 5 processor, as it was 19-20% to 20 faster at 1080p and 1440p before the results became heavily GPU limited at 4K. Of course, the 13400F is still a very fast CPU on this title, pushing 213fps at 1080p, but we did still see around 20% more performance from the 7500F, so a big performance uplift there. We're also looking at reasonable performance gains for the 7500F and Far Cry 6 where it was 15% faster at 1080p and interestingly 24% faster at 1440p. Now normally you'd expect the margin to shrink at 1440p, but we have seen examples in the past where increasing the resolution also increases CPU load. And in this example, the 13400F also appears to be suffering from some kind of latency penalty, which is seen at 4K, where the 7500F was stopped 10% faster. Perhaps Nvidia's driver overhead is impacting the Core i5 more than the Ryzen 5 in this example, not entirely sure what's going on here. The Ryzen 5 7500F was much faster in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, producing 26% more frames at 1080p, hitting 252fps. That said though, the 1440p data was far more GPU limited and as a result the Ryzen 5 processor was now just 6% faster, and then of course the 4K data was 100% GPU limited. The Hitman 3 performance is more competitive, especially when looking at the 1% lows, still the 7500F was 8% faster at 1080p and 9% faster at 1440p when looking at the average frame rate, and even at 4K it was still 6% faster. Now for benchmarking Baldur's Gate 3, we're testing at Baldur's Gate, as this is one of the more CPU demanding sections of the game, at least that we've come across. The results here are interesting because the 13400F and 7500F are seen delivering virtually identical performance at 1080p, and although the margins at 1440p and 4K aren't huge, they do widen in favour of the Ryzen processor, and at 4K the 7500F was 6% faster. Last up we have F123, and this is an easy win for the 7500F, as it was 25% faster at 1080p and 1440p, so a pretty massive performance uplift there, despite both CPUs delivering highly playable performance. Now when it comes to power consumption, the 7500F and 13400F, they're fairly evenly matched. The Ryzen processor does typically consume a bit more power, and on average we saw total system usage increase by 22 watts. That said, this doesn't take into account the fact that the Ryzen processor was faster and therefore pushed the GPU to work harder. So let's take a look at the performance per watt. Okay, so when looking at the performance per watt, we see that the 7500F is actually the more efficient gaming processor, though only by a very small margin. We're talking 3% more efficient based on this data. So power usage is really a non-issue when comparing these two CPUs. Okay, so here's a look at performance seen across the 26 game configurations, and on average, the 7500F delivered 12% more performance, with its biggest win coming the way of Fortnite, followed by Call of Duty and then F123, so all the titles that saw really big frame rates. Meanwhile, there was just a single example where the 7500F was slower, and that was seen when testing the Rift Breaker. When looking at the 1% lows, we find similar results really. Overall, the 7500F is now 9% faster, and for the most part, the titles where the Ryzen processor did well are still the same. Then jumping up to 1440p reduced the overall margin to 10%, so just a small reduction when compared to the 1080p testing. And again, it's Fortnite and F123 where the 7500F does its best work, and we also saw some pretty big gains in Far Cry 6, the Callisto Protocol, and Horizon Zero Dawn. Again, the margins for the 1% lows are slightly lower, 8% at 1440p, but that's a reasonable win for the Ryzen 5 part, and we did see gains of over 20% in Far Cry 6 and Fortnite. Then at the mostly GPU limited 4K resolution, the 7500F was 5% faster on average, but as I said, we were mostly testing GPU performance here, so take this data with a grain of salt. We really only include it at the request of viewers. We're also looking at just a 4% uplift for the 7500F at 4K when looking at the 1% lows, and while most examples saw margins of 5% or less, it's the heavily CPU limited titles using lower quality settings such as Fortnite that helped get us that 4% result overall. So there you have it, for gamers on a budget, the Ryzen 5 7500F is going to be extremely appealing, especially if it's available at $180 US or less. 
though of course that is yet to be seen. And with the 7600 available these days for $220 US, at least at some retailers, I think the 7500F really does need to be priced below $200 to make sense. And I haven't mentioned it yet, so I better quickly squeeze this in now, but the 7500F also comes with the Wraith Stealth box cooler, just like the 7600. So you don't have to go and spend any more money on a cooler if you don't want to. Now, for those of you building a new gaming PC, I see little reason why I'd entertain the idea of going with the Core i5-13400. It's likely going to cost you more, and as we just saw, it's almost always slower for gaming, sometimes much slower. And it's worth keeping in mind that we were using more expensive DDR5-7200 memory with the Intel CPU. Then, even for those of you who are interested in productivity, the 13400 and its cluster of e-cores generally don't enjoy a performance advantage over the 7500F, and in many applications will actually end up slower, though overall I'd expect them to trade blows. So, if you're interested in productivity, I think the Core i5-13500 for $250 makes a lot more sense as it packs twice as many e-cores, and with Ryzen 7 7700s priced up around $330 US, the 13500 it has no real competition. I should also note that right now Intel has dropped pricing for their Core i5-12600K down to $185 US, which is an incredible deal. And while not that much faster than the 13400F out of the box, it can be overclocked. Still, the 7500F is also set to cost $180 US and should generally be faster than the 12600K for gaming while using less power, but maybe that's a comparison we can make in the future. For now, the prospect of a sub $200 US Zen 4 processor is exciting, and I hope to see the 7500F on shelf soon at the expected $180 US MSRP. The only potential issue being availability, as AMD requires defective silicon without a working iGPU to create the 7500F. So this might be a difficult item to find in stock, depending on popularity. Anyway, that is going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please do give it a thumbs up, subscribe, because we're always doing more content and surely that'll be worth watching. And also, we have some new merch. So the, the 8-bit It Depends meme merch, if you're a, you know, we're always saying It Depends and then explaining why it depends in our Q&A series. So you guys wanted a It Depends hoodie, so we've made one. Anyway, harborunbox.com. If you go to the website, you'll find the store there and you can order one if you want. If you're based in the US, we're trying to open it up to other regions, but so far US based only. So sorry for those of you like myself that aren't based in the US. Also float plane Patreon, sign up to either one of those things. You'll get some pretty cool perks like monthly live stream with Tim and myself for, for members only, Discord server for members, Q&A and behind the scenes content. So check that out if you're interested, but if not, that is perfectly fine. I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve. See you next time.